send it to me and um through mm-hmm. uh google right. drive and then i'll re- upload it to dps yeah either way it. it's fine yeah but what is up guys it is your boy forte and we are here for another exciting episode of the dash per second podcast episode 121 hey we're almost 25 percent through the, the 100 going to 200 slow-mo getting close man but um with that being said man it's gonna it's gonna be a great show shout out to the 19 21 people that's here had a real good conversation with you guys before the show started uh definitely everybody want to talk about this hogwarts legacy stuff because um everybody's out here enjoying it or you're getting ready to enjoy it and play it but with that being said let me um let me wrap with my amazing co-host first the man the myth the legend the man of many slaps the man that plays every game on the hardest difficulty I don't know if he really does that. That just sounds good. Slow mo, what is up, man? How you been? Definitely not every game. Uh, a good number. It depends on the game. It is it, I, like sometimes I do hard difficulty. Sometimes I won't. Uh, but in the game that you have been talking about, Hogwarts Legacy, I got two different characters. One's on hard, the other one's on normal. But it's fine. I'm just uh, I'm just enjoying myself, man. I'm, you know, I'm doing good. How, how are you, man? How, how you been over the past week? I know we ain't talked too much. Yeah, no, we talked for a second uh, a couple days ago, and that was about it. But I've been, I've been fine. I've been really doing a lot of stuff at work. I'm having a super, super. Well, I don't know if I'm having, but we have um, my boss's boss, his boss, the boss above that boss, and the boss above that boss visiting our area, and it's a really good chance that. I, one of my stores is going to probably get hit by it because all our stores in this area are really close to each other. So it's a good chance that they're going to probably sneak by one of my stores. So just, you know, just making sure all my teeth got to be on your P's and Q's, right? Oh, right, yeah. Right. You got, you know how it is. You got to, you got to make sure that that type of stuff is all set. But, um, it's going to be a, it's going to be a great time. I'm going to be good with it. But, um, outside of that, man, yeah, just playing a few different games and stuff. Uh, I went back in. I'm trying to get the uh, shout out to Shadow Warrior, um, the definitive edition about the hit Game Pass. I already had bought that game and already mm-hmm. had beat it. But when I saw it pop up, I was like, you know what? I still got two achievements unless I need to get in this game to get that cool crispy 1000 on it. So I went back in. Um, about to I do the same up. thing. Yeah, if you if you real close, if you like real close real to close. getting. Like, like, for example, like the, the division one, I had one achievement left. It was like 49 out of 50. There's like one achievement left. And it was, it, uh, unfortunately it was the whole going to division survival and extract 100 caches out. And I was at like 45. Oh man. That don't even sound close. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. So it was like, it was just one. So it was, but I still did it because it was just one achievement left. Like if that was, if it, if it was like I had five achievements and I was like, heck no, I ain't doing that. But it was like one achievement left, and I love survivals. It was just like, bet I'll do it. And for me, it was cool because I kind of like, I had this pattern, this whole strategy down, and every single run I would do like do these one little certain things that I, I just had rules at that point where I was just like, I don't go here. I don't go there. I don't even attempt to engage enemies until I, uh, I reach, uh, a certain level, I get a certain amount of gear and stuff like that. And it's just like, by the time I got down to like the last 10 caches, it was just like every run was successful every single time. Mm-hmm. It was like clockwork. So it was, it was cool, but it was just, I'm like that where it's just, if I got like, I beat the game and I got like, it's like 40 trophies in it and I got 20. (laughs) I'm not platinum that. I got to, I got to at least be a good 80 to 90% there. By the time I beat the game, then it's like, yeah, I think I'm going to just go ahead and get this platinum or this, um, this cool 1000 out the way before, before I move on. Yeah, every every time is always I'm I'm close. Like yeah. if I'm close, then yeah, I'll go ahead and do it. Yeah, I, I need it's one for upgrading all of my abilities. I literally have two abilities left to upgrade. And one is me just going through skill. Um I gotta go through level select and there's a there's a certain enemy in a game that I need to kill a certain way. And I'm like, okay, I just gotta go back and do it. So it's not gonna take that long. It's just I just I just started playing it again today earlier and said, I'm gonna do this. So 
But yeah, outside of that, man, just, you know, just doing the things we've been doing. So it really hasn't been a lot of stuff um, happening this week. I mean, outside of the, the normal daily and weekly ritual about what's going on with Xbox and, and ABK and, and all the regulators, which everybody is super tired of and no one wants to talk about it. We're not going to talk about that on this show today because you don't see it as Thank a topic. God. So I I really don't care, but um I did see one thing that was interesting about what Ubisoft had to say though. Slow mo, they said, "Well, hold, go ahead." Never mind. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, what are you about to say? I, I I thought we were going to talk about the games that we've been playing. Oh no, yeah, yeah, um, well, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. You, 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 what have you been playing? I know you've been playing the topics sports. and everything. I mean, God dang. Oh, that was listen. You right? You right? You right? Go ahead. But no, um. I mean, like you, you said you played, you've been playing Shadow Warrior Three. That's fine. Um, I have been exclusively playing Hogwarts Legacy. Like, mm-hmm. it's, I, I can't even, I can't put it down. Um, Enrique's been trying to be like, "Hey, slow, you trying to play Halo?" I'm just like, I'm, look, I, I have not been ignoring Enrique. I just see it like two hours late because I just been engrossed in the Wizarding World. Okay. I uh, I haven't been playing Halo. I haven't been playing Rogue Company. I haven't been playing. I did play a little bit of COD when the new season dropped. I did Mm -hmm. play a little bit of that with a couple of my friends. But, like, that was, like, 45 minutes. As soon as they was like, yo, I got to pick up my kids from school and stuff, I was like, bet, I'll be here. And I I jump right back on Hogwarts. Like like I said, I have two characters. And one's a Slytherin. Um, that's that's less uh slomonious backslappiest, okay. So he he's that that's him. And then um the other one is a Ravenclaw. I call her Jade, and um she she's the one I'm, I'm playing on hard. Uh, uh, the Slytherin I'm playing on normal. But I'm not even that far in the like. What I what I do is I do one like I go up to a certain point with one character and then i switch over so that they're not too far behind each other but i'm doing so much exploring the map is really huge i mean like i did i i underestimated how big this map was going to be like i i didn't i didn't realize it was that much like you you start going south and you're like wait a minute how, how much further south do i have and it's just like there's so many uh little towns and castles and 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 stuff going on it's just i i just been running around and 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 killing people (laughs) Uh, so much that like i haven't really like got too far in the story like i'm probably about i I couldn't even say how far through the game i am i i might i might be close to halfway but i've put in I'm I'm up to 15 hours on my Slytherin and about 10 hours on on my uh my my Ravenclaw. So they there it's about 25 hours. Where's but you? I've been I've been grinding like they got these arenas in there and I like if you just want to just like do the combat and challenge yourself cuz you can throw it on hard and just uh uh well one of my characters is already on hard, the other one's on normal, but I pushed him up to hard when I do the arenas. And uh, I just like to really challenge yourself to really see if you could like take on when you get to like wave five, you're like, oh my god, like how who thought this was a good idea? (laughs) (laughs) Yo, it's just like there's two trolls, there's like four dark wizards, there's a bunch of spiders coming at you, and goblins, and you just like, man, like it's like you're just dodging. And trying to get perfect parry off and dodging, it's just it gets crazy. Mm-hmm. And uh, but I'm, I'm enjoying it. Like if if I if I don't get past that fifth wave, I'm like that's bet I've got it next time. I'm at the point now where I'm just getting through them, and and mm-hmm. it's a ton of great experience. But I had to stop doing it uh, as much as I looked at like my levels, and I don't, you know, with some of these games, you don't want to be. I mean, it depends on the game, but sometimes you don't want to be over leveled. Cause then it kind of like messes up the balance of, of like you're going through the story mm-hmm. and then like you, you're supposed to meet a, like a, a boss or something. And it's supposed to be difficult, but you're so over level. It's just like, eh, whatever. <laughs> it's just like, it's, it's not that bad. Um, like the, where I'm currently at, I'm probably, I'm level 24 on my Slytherin and 
where the the story missions are where they say you need to be a minimum at it's like i need to be a minimum of like 17. so it's like i'm too i'm too over leveled at that point so i i stopped doing the arenas for now so i can just get into the story and then oh they got the unforgivable curses mm-hmm. so i got i got crucio you know i got the the torture curse now i i just need i just need to get that death curse and the other curse that 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 uh allows you to the mind control people mm-hmm. and this or in this a wrap i'm telling you it it, it is a wrap after that i don't I, I I'll be the most evilest guy in the wizarding world. I'm telling you, like I, like, <laughs> oh, I, I can't wait. I see you've been you've been on Twitter posting about only magicians know about this and all this other stuff. I was like, oh yeah, 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 the fit man, the fit I was know, looking nice. Look, I was, was, was look looking like a, a proper on. a proper magician with the top hat with the tuxedo fit on. Like yeah, only only real magicians know. You know what I'm saying? Forget forget the robes and the and the, the old super super big huge quadruple X robes on. Forget that crap. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, I'm talking about. I'm out here looking like David Copperfield out here. So it's uh it's 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 been fun. It's been fun, man. It's uh it's a really really good game. Probably, I would say probably the best the the game. I wouldn't say the best game that's come out so far this year, but it's definitely the game I've enjoyed the most so far this year. So I could definitely say that and. Uh, <laughs> I get, I'll, I'll hold off some of my other thoughts about how this game will fare throughout the year and its sales and whatnot for the it. topic later. But yeah, yeah but yeah, there, there's been it's, everything that I've been playing has been um, completely bombarded by that. Tomorrow, I will try to play some other things. I want to. I, I got returned on PC. I haven't played it yet. I want to play it tomorrow. I also am in a. Uh, I got an NDA for it, so I can't talk about the exact game. But mm. there is. There's a game, NDAs. huh? Someone out here get NDAs. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, every now and then, you know. But I, I, I got there's a game I got to test. Uh, this, uh, but I think there's, the, I think me just saying there's a game I'm supposed to test. Uh, a lot of people already know what that is. I was gonna say, can we? Like, is they, NDA they've been pretty open. The, covered the the developer too. Uh yeah yeah I, like I don't you can't really talk about publisher or developer at least it's not supposed to at least that's how this isn't the first time I've tested this game and so that's the way it was when I did the first like I signed the NDA I really didn't read it oh, I'm not man, supposed to do you that tested Rocket Arena too ain't you <laughs> um yeah but what's the, look like I'm I'm just not going to say the name of it so I don't mess <laughs> anything man, up but listen man he he tested Rocket Arena too. <laughs> <laughs> Rocket or anything though. Um, but no, um, no, it's uh, uh I'll, I'll play some of that tomorrow, and but uh, no, that's that's all I've been playing so far. Oh, yeah, man, I that's that's pretty much outside of like I said, jumping back into what's the name. Um, I just been playing um, Destiny, trying to get some stuff all figured out on that. Um, Ronimus took a guess, he said a rock, he said Atomic Heart, but he can't tell you so. Your, your guest is meaningless, but <laughs> uh, shout out to you though, bro. Um, all right, well, you know, jump into the uh, first topic about uh, E3. And I thought this was really interesting because <laughs> this like really makes me wonder, is, is E3 actually going to happen? Because Ubisoft did their quarterly um, earnings call and they were asked about E3 slow-mo. And uh, the CEO, do you know what he said? Well, Eves. Yeah, what did he say about it? <laughs> Uh, let me, let me guess here. Let me guess here. Eve said, uh, we will have stuff at E3 as long as my lazy good for nothing employees finish the work. Is that, is that close? That's that's close. But he also said, um, he also doubled down on it. said, well, if E3 happens, (laughs) we'll, we'll definitely have lots to show. And I'm sitting there like, if what's if? I didn't know E3 wasn't going to happen. So slow mo. Uh, well, it's Eve's. I, I wouldn't say that that's an indication that E3 is not going to happen. No, I'm just saying that's just. I know it's not. I'm just saying, but it was just real interesting wording for him to say it like because you know people are going to jump to that conclusion. It's like well, right, why, right, right. Why? Why if E3 happens? Well, 
up to this point, E3, or, they announced it last year that E3 is happening. Well, look, you can't trust anything Eve says, honestly. That's, that's true, like, too. They, they recently <laughs> said that they have no plans or not in uh, certain games are that they are working on, that they claim they aren't working on, aren't in development. I know they are. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so Ubisoft don't be telling the truth all the time anyway. That said, uh, there is, <laughs> there, there was talk that, there is actually they said it to their investors that there was supposed to be a game that they haven't even announced yet, but supposed to come out before the end of this fiscal, this current fiscal year, mm -hmm. which would be like for them like early next year. Or so I think what he's talking about is potentially if there is an E3, excuse me, they'll be announcing a game that will be coming out pretty soon. And considering how that like looks, where you're gonna announce a game and then drop it almost not necessarily a shadow drop, but close to it, it's probably gonna be a live service game, which is I mean, pretty much all they've been trying to do for the past, I don't know, two years. So there's that. If they got a lot to show some of the games that people have been not happy about. That they're working on, like X Defiant. I think that's coming out this year. Division Heartland is definitely coming out this year. The one of I don't I don't think the Splinter Cell game comes out this year. I think that'll be next year. Mm -hmm. But uh I think we'll get a Ghost Recon game this year. And there's something else that oh, Assassin's Creed and, and Assassin's Creed. So they, they do have stuff in development. And Oh, I'm, I completely forgot the two biggest games that they're they're most concerned about. That Avatar game is coming out this year too, guaranteed. Mm -hmm. Like that, they actually wanted that Avatar game to come out when the movie came out, mm -hmm. but they it wasn't ready. So uh, Massive Entertainment had to get it delayed, and so that that's coming out probably. I would say that one might be out this summer. That's the summerish, and then Man, the Star Wars so game horrible. would be next year. So, did you go yeah. see the Avatar movie? I did not. I heard it was great, though. Yeah, it looked weird. I mean, I mean well, I mean, it's Avatar. It well, no, well, mm, well, the original Avatar looked amazing. Uh, this one looks, it's, I think, it's, I wonder what the percentage on CGI is in this movie when it comes to the characters. I mean, I, it's it's like a decade older. It's got to have better mm, like computer effects than the previous movie. Mm, I mean, I don't know. I haven't seen it. A lot I, of I'm stuff not, I'm was, not really... I think they did a lot of practical stuff in the original that made it um made it look better. Uh, shout out, hey chat, anybody that saw the new um the new Avatar, tell me what you thought of the aesthetic. I mean, it looked good, but did it look like as crisp? Like as lifelike as the original did well, to you guys, it kind of bring, threw me off a little bit. Well, to bring it back to gaming, I hope that uh, look, Snowdrop engine is a is an amazing looking engine, and actually r runs really well. That said, uh, the way that Avatar game looked <laughs> was yeah, not that great, right? And I'm kind of like, mm, look, look it. <laughs> that that game you know is, is this why i don't have a division three right now because of this mm -hmm. i don't know man it don't look it, 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 it's you know a ride in the chest is it looked really good well I mean, maybe he's talking about the movie looked really good not no no yeah he talked about the movie yeah he said it it really the game good. Okay, not, yeah, it just looked weird it, to me a little bit but okay yeah but they they, they definitely wanted to try to get that cl as close as possible to the, the the movie but they weren't able to but like considering where the the target release date was that game's not that far off so yeah hmm. someone wants to actually give it a shot well you know hey you're probably going to see it real real, real soon so uh i i don't know if they're still because i remember the last couple years since the pandemic started they've been doing this like ubisoft connect thing where they have like two shows a year and I don't know, but they're always like one's early in the year and the other one's later in the year. But if mm -hmm. they think E3 is going to happen, they may just do the early one 
uh, in the middle of the year, like in the summer round time, the E three starts. So that I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. But right, Ubisoft is. The Ubisoft has an identity crisis, man. And we, we talked about this before, mm-hmm. but like they, I, I just really need them to to do as that one developer told their CEO. Why are we chasing trends instead of being creative and creating our own trends? I wish they would just like the, the leadership there would just pull their heads out of their butts and just allow the creatives there to do their job. Do mm-hmm. be creative, create something that's new and unique and different because Ubisoft didn't get to where they are now by copying everyone else. Mm-hmm. They got to where they are by making games, uh, creating successful f- franchises like S- Assassin's Creed, Splinter Cell, Ghost Recon, Rainbow Six. These were games where, like, you weren't getting that kind of gameplay anywhere else. Mm-hmm. And at some point, they just like stopped trying to do that and just only cared about milking the franchises and then only cared about, oh, well, when that stopped working, oh, well, let's, what, what what's hot right now? Right. Battle Royale's hot? Let, let's make a Battle Royale. What, what's hot right now? Uh, oh, oh, that, that's hot. Let's do that. It's just, you can't, you can't take other successful ideas game designs that other people make and just take your IP, slap your IP on it and say, all right, you know, how come this didn't work? It didn't work because there was, wasn't mm-hmm. enough about your game that different, that made it different mm-hmm. than what you copy. You know, it's, you, you have to make it unique. Like, like Fortnite isn't a straight copy of, of PUBG. Apex Legends isn't a straight copy of Fortnite. Like there, there, there's, there's uniqueness to those games, even though they're in the same genre. And those unique u- unique features are the reason why people play it. Like I just saw something earlier this week that said that uh, Apex Legends hit 600k uh, concurrent players on Steam, which is the highest it's been ever. And that mm-hmm. game's four years old. You know, like that's th- those are numbers that like Hyperscape that Ubisoft created never hit not even got close to hitting it and you just you you have to be able to take some risk and it's 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 you know it's almost like a bad word to say that when you're dealing with investors and and big publishers that make a ton of money and and triple a gaming is becomes more and more expensive right every year but if you don't take risk you're 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 going to you're bound to keep failing and keep being in a rut like this. It's just I'm off my soapbox. I'm no, it, it, I mean you're you're not, you're spitting now. It, it it ultimately comes down to like it's like the formula is still the same, even knowing the formula supposed to have changed years ago, but it hasn't. They did on right. top of that is a bunch of games like um. We're still waiting on like okay, like beyond you know, good and evil two, where where's that? Where where's a lot of these other games? You know, people want to splinter sale, they say they're working on one, or it's rumored that they're working on one, but you know, it's been almost a decade since we seen Sam Fisher, but you'll put him in a series, you'll put him in a, a beat up. Put him in, in up. They put him in, in freaking in freaking mobile games. Yeah, they'll put like, him in a mobile game, but they won't put doing? him they'll put him as a they'll put him as like DLC character inside of Ghost Recon. And it's like, but why won't you oh, give him his own game? It that, that mission was cool. It was cool. But people was like, Can can we get it? Can we get our own Splinter Cell game? No. Right. <laughs> exactly. And, and I was a little disappointed because I kind of wanted to like actually have Sam Fisher in my squad. Like I actually kind of like he yeah. but he was more of like moving in the shadows and talking to you on comms oh mm-hmm. i just took out this this group right here i'm gonna flip this switch be ready to shoot like that kind of stuff is like all right <laughs> i mean that's not sam <laughs> but all right you know it's it's crazy but it, it, it is what it is man they they'll they, they'll either figure it out eventually or they you know they won't 
So. Yeah, they mm, well, you know how it is. Uh, shout out to uh, Basement Radio RK Podcast, Brap Homeboy. Uh, thanks for the two dollar uh, super chat. Says slow mo is always right. Mm. Uh, of course. Slow mo, he will always agree with you when he like. If you ever want gr- slow mo to um agree with you, stroke his ego by saying he's always right, and you will always get a positive response from slow mo. That's not always true, but it, it is right now. But it's not always true. Oh, it is not. It's just not right now. I got you. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> yeah. All right. Moving on to the next thing. Uh, did you see the PSVR breakdown that they did? Well, I didn't see Sony's breakdown. I did see a couple of reviews. I saw Digital Foundry's review, and I saw ACG's review of it. Yeah, uh, it's about it's about what I expected. It's very impressive uh, yep. VR technology. I, I think uh, I'll say what I said before about it being appropriately priced for what it is, um, and even though it is expensive, uh, people shouldn't take that as like a a bad word. Mm-hmm things being expensive if it's if it fits the value then it is what it is right. uh it's it's exp- like a, a expensive car is <laughs> it's a it's, it's priced that way for a particular reason you know because of the value so if it's if it's if it's expensive and you want it then so be it like if you look at other like PC VR headsets that are uh, around the same spec level, mm-hmm. they're more expensive than the P- the PSVR too. So so it makes sense to me. Um, uh, but me personally, I I'm still not getting it because mm. I don't care about VR, man. Like I've tried it, and it, it's just I I know there are people that swear by it that like it's the greatest thing ever. I I I'm not I've have yet to be impressed. So I just I I, I've so what is the thing about VR that just has it just you just not the allure of just the immersion of it is something that you never really got into. Well, they need more AAA actual games in VR, like games that are unique that take advantage of VR and actually are triple a budget kind of must have kind of titles. There's not too many of them out there like that. I feel like every vr platform has at least one mm-hmm. and 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 sony now has that with uh call of the mountain you know horizon call of the mountain um valve has that with half-life alex and and meta has that with the the lost echo games that mm-hmm. that uh ready at dawn makes but i played the lost echo games i just really wasn't too impressed Mm. it's just and and that's not enough to spend the amount of, for me for me to spend the amount of money i'm spending that's just simply not enough for for me to like i i i don't regret buying the quest 2 i mean it was only, i spent 350 right it's not that not, not exactly you know breaking the bank or anything but the titles like so I, we still see like these like hey we got the the vr version of resident evil village i'm like that game wasn't designed for vr the game was designed for a traditional gaming experience that you then repurpose to kind of work with vr and it's exactly and incredible though what the, the re village mm-hmm. yeah look i'm just i'm not interested man i <laughs> I just they, like I just I, 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 even you if know. you were interested, that would be the last game on the list that you would even think about you playing. No, he's <laughs> playing a Resident <laughs> Evil game. Say you up here, up here trying to throw shade at Resident Evil and, and, Village. And, no, 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 but no, it's no. a game that you wouldn't even even lift a finger. No, I'm, be I'm the not. Only don't, I'm not throwing shade at about. the game. I'm not throwing shade at the game. I'm just it's not. It's not the kind of title I'm interested in. You would but play- that, but for for me, for me, that's the, goes the even further because a lot of the VR games are out there and it kind of lends towards like the style of vr they're like horror experiences they want you to get immersed in that kind of stuff like true you got a vr headset on it's way going to be way scarier than playing just a regular game like like that's why super massive has got a time exclusive uh what is it called um 
a timed exclusive uh one of their games um mm-hmm. coming out for is, is it switch something switch back or yeah it's like, i don't know yeah, it's switch something i know what you're talking about I can't yeah the name of it. it yeah it's it's a it's a it's not a full exclusive it's like time i think it's like maybe time for like a year but like Seems to be those right? yeah those kind of games are what it's like easier to make those kind of games in VR, right? Mm-hmm. Like uh, the, your uh, what's the other one? Um, Friday Night at Freddy's, those kind of uh, games, stuff to just jump out, jump scare crap, like, eh, whatever. Fine, oh, man, like, I, I get it. Friday Night at Freddy, man. Friday Night at Freddy is the like <laughs> the first one was unique, and the other ones are just cop- copy pasta. It's the same thing. Oh man, but I'm just I, I'm just not interested in VR, and I'm not throwing shade. Like I still got mine. I'm looking at it right now. It's got a, a little. It's got a little film of dust on it. I need to. <laughs> Why did you buy that all. thing? I wanted to try it out. Look, I was interested to see. Like I did my research, mm-hmm. and I and I started looking at like you know all the stuff like 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 uh, all the technologies that are in in play with it, like foveated foveated rendering and you know and and how, how much what resolution they're doing per eye and everything. I did all my research. I was just like you know what. I'm not, I don't really, I'm not invested enough to go spend, and this is like a year ago, mm-hmm. I think. So I, like, I wasn't invested enough to spend $1,000 on the Valve Index or the six to $800 for the HTC Vive. Like I wasn't I'm not invested like that. But let me give you try like an actual real VR headset. The, and the Quest 2 is a real VR headset. It's cheaper because it's less powerful. Uh, uh, it, it, the specs aren't as good as the other ones, but it if you connect it directly to your PC, you know, you can definitely play games like Half-Life Alex with it, like the more more powerful games and stuff. But, I, yeah, I just don't care, man. It's mm-hmm. just like, I don't care about VR. But for those who like VR... Like I think PSVR two is gonna really uh, impress them for that. So mm. yeah, no, that's. What, what are your thoughts on it? I know I know you're getting it for your daughter. So oh, I, I mean, see the thing is, I the 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 primary purpose is because of her, but uh, I will play games in VR. Like I played um, Rogue um, Rogue Squadron. I played that in VR because they had a VR mode. Uh, I did play Ace Combat um, Seven because that had a VR mode. Normally, with the stuff like like you know more immersive stuff like that, I will do it. Like I always pictured myself wanting to be at that was like the one thing when I grew up and wanted to be a fighter pilot. You know, Top Gun kind of did it for me, like it did mm-hmm. for a lot of people. Uh, I just chose not to go to the military because of it. But um, I uh, I will do stuff like that, experiences like that. Um, VR is cool. Beat Saber is like really, really cool. If you ever get a chance, Beat to Saber play. was fun. I did Beat play. Saber's that's really the most fun. fun. That's the most fun I had in VR was Beat Saber. And I also kind of like sells it. <laughs> and, and I, I did mention this before. Like some of, the, and I think I mentioned this back when we had Struggle on, um, um, a few weeks shout ago. Out to struggle, shout, struggle gamers, shout out to him. Um, some of the best experience and experiences in VR have nothing to do with games. That's and it's true. like. Like the whole theater mode thing. Like there's a free app on in the uh the meta, in the meta uh, Oculus in the Oculus store where you can just create it, have a theater, and everyone's sitting in the theater and you can connect your your Netflix account to it or whatever and just watch movies and TV mm-hmm. shows, watch Stranger Things with a group of people. And, and your little avatars are sitting in theater chairs and stuff. Like that stuff's cool. Yeah. But like it ain't got nothing to do with gaming. You know, and I, I think like there's so many things like shout out to Kay Asante because he was all like, oh, slow mo, check this out. He's the one that introduced me to that. And me and him jumped in a little theater room. I was like, wow, this is amazing. So like- nothing to do with gaming, but this is amazing. <laughs> this is great. And he would, he, and he would he just kept showing me things that were amazing, but had nothing to do with gaming. And I even thought for a moment, I was like, wow, you know, what if we did a podcast in like one of those theaters once? And it's just like the podcast is from there, you know, it, that'd be, it'd be interesting, you know, like it didn't invite people to, to that. Like, what if like Twitter spaces, uh, could be turned into like a VR 
theater room. And so when you see people arguing in Twitter spaces, and it is like that the people, the viewers that are watching are people in the audience watching it. Like I thought about like, man, that would be pretty, pretty uh, sweet. But um, yeah, you would get like six people in there because <laughs> ain't nobody got VR like that. Ain't nobody paying money for VR like that, especially that for that kind of experience. So it is what it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, man, VR is cool. It's, um, it's not for everybody. I do think that it's getting to a point where a lot of people are going to really start enjoying it more and more because the phrase per second per eye is definitely, um, going to help people when it comes to like their motion sickness and stuff. And I think that's the biggest thing with VR. Like I always say, if you're able to do it and you don't get motion sickness, you're going to, you're going to love and enjoy the experience and you'll kind of get hooked to it. And then it just comes down to them, um, giving you content that you want to play on that thing. So, and then you're going to have the people like you that really liked the experience, but was like, yeah, it was a cool experience for me to try to one time. And I'm pretty much it's, you know, it was a test subject for you basically. So, right, right, right. I gave, I gave it a shot. You know, I bought, I bought a, uh, a device. I gave it a shot. It's not for me. I didn't sell it or anything. I could, but I, I, I still have it. You know, I, I well, you know what the one thing I want to do in VR I haven't done yet. What's that? I want to do Among Us in VR. Oh, that's that's probably be cool. And, and like, and I I remember seeing them do the the uh, the promo for it. I think it was at the VGAs, and I was like, that that's the perfect game for VR. And I and it, but then I started thinking like, it's already like I don't I don't play Among Us with a bunch of people on the regular already. It's already kind of like, hey, let's get some people to do Among Us. And it's like, you got to find people who are free and want to do it. And then it's really not fun if it's just five people. You really need to get like 10 and they get like multiple imposters. Mm -hmm. And that's just on regular Among Us. That's on, on your phone, on PC, on every console that's out on your Switch. Now, now, the take all of that difficulty, getting all of that that those uh, all, all all the logistics and getting everyone together mm -hmm. for an Among Us session on regular traditional gaming devices, and then add in the additional difficulty of doing it in VR. Not right. difficult in doing it in VR, difficult in finding people who have a VR headset to do it. <laughs> That's the difficulty. And so it's like, then it's like, that's the reason why I kept it. Because if there is a chance that there are the people that want to play it and play something I'm actually interested in, well, hey, I got a VR headset. Let me go ahead and turn it on and do like 5,000 gigs of updates. And then right. I'm going to join you. But like, it's just, I've yet to have that experience yet. There's no one that wants to play Among Us in VR that I know. You know, it's unfortunate, but it is what it is. Yeah. No, I, I understand that. I think a lot of people, um, it just takes people to, you know, <laughs> be able to do it. Uh, Phil says, if Twitter spaces get VR, they're going to be fighting each other's avatars. <laughs> oh, man. <funny. laughs> That's actually pretty funny. funny that is actually. true. Funny. Um, shout out to the um, the people out there with the uh, blue chat marks next to their name. That's what that's what Twitter has devolved itself to. Um, <laughs> all right, moving on to uh, the next subject. Let's talk about Xbox, man. Let's talk about you know something that I thought everybody knew, and you know, I don't know why you listen to executives when they tell you things. Because what what is the job of an, of an exec executive of a company, slow mo? Uh, to get you to buy stuff. Yeah. So why would you ever listen to, I understand that people think that these execs are their friends and stuff and they, you know, they, they, <laughs> you know, they swear by them and everything. But, um, so during, so I guess, I guess this is kind of talking about the ABK thing, cause this is how it actually came up, you know, during Microsoft's, um, you know, trying to <laughs> salvage this deal that seems like it's slipping away every day of the week. Um, with new stuff that's coming out for the CMA and the UK regulators and everything, they were mm -hmm. talking about it. Microsoft basically ended up kind of admitting that 
Game Pass does kind of hurt game sales in general. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I remember Phil Spencer last year talking about how Forza Horizon 5 sales were doing a lot better than expected because it was inside the Game Pass. And they also announced... um, Phone's ringing. And they also announced, remember, State of Decay, when it hit Game Pass, they said due to um, it being put inside a Game Pass, it actually was outperforming uh, itself in sales due to it being out, too. So there's a lot of I mean, different... That was, that was also five years ago. Yeah, it was like five years ago, right? Exactly. There was really no yeah. data points then. Anything would probably sell. And plus, it was like the middle of the generation, so people were still buying games and stuff. Um so when you hear this slow mo, what is your what is your first thought process on you know just Game Pass and the selling of games and stuff and how it affects it or not it doesn't affect the purchase of them? Um, well for me, I don't really care because it, it ain't my job to, to to really want like I mean I don't really care if it, if if they're making money off of it or not. If I got to play a game that I wanted to play, and I didn't have to spend money on it. Fine. That's mm-hmm. that's I'm, I I I I did what I got what I wanted out of it. I don't know about you, you know, you know. I, I, was <laughs> I don't say, know about you. <laughs> I, I was about to say something real. Never mind. Let me let me let me let, let's let's keep this uh let's keep this family friendly. Anyway, uh, right. Um, but for, for on their side of things, I'm sure that's not what they want to see. Right now, I did do recall seeing a screenshot of the the cat the segment in the cma was it i think it was the cma um documentation where it said that and they they kind of redacted the percentage that it, it's it uh it reduced it and so they're talking 12 months right so after 12 months the games sales are i guess down compared to i don't know was it down compared to their expectations is it down compared like and we don't know the exact number either so with, without those data points i'm not saying this a nothing nothing burger um i'm gonna say i still want to get more information or know more information before i i uh get out the pitchforks and and mm-hmm. and torches to to go find phil spencer uh i also gotta gotta like look at it from the perspective that Phil Spencer made the statement that Game Pass is like games, uh, it helps games to make sales years ago mm-hmm. and now in 2023 we get we get that like after a 12 month period, no it's not so was he was he playing with, with statistics then? Or is he playing with them now? Or is he playing or, or has things changed with game pass significantly enough from then to now that it's no longer the case and he can't really say that anymore i don't know you know was he was he looking only at like a three-month period mm-hmm. like oh in a three-month period you know they're, 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 this it's it's you know it's helping sales and then after 12 months not so much anymore i mean is that the case there's a lot of questions that come out of this that I don't have answers for. So for me, if I don't have answers, then I'm not really going to be like one way or no, another. Phil, 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 Uncle Phil lied to me. Like, people call him Uncle Phil. Uncle Phil. Pisses me off. There's only one Uncle Phil. There's but, only one anyway. Uncle Phil. Rest in peace, Uncle Phil. <laughs> right. But uh no, um if it uh whether he lied or not the the fact of the matter is that in 2023 the game goes to the game pass a year later it is not selling uh well the way they want it to sell or whatever right Mm -hmm. uh we all recognize that like typically on a normal traditional game that is traditionally sold when is the when is the most that game sells in the first th- first three months, exactly. after the first three months, it never recovers. Not never. There, there, there are games uh, like Sekiro. Uh, Sek- what did Sekiro did because of the Game of the Year nominations? It was right, like right, right, right. So yeah, if you later. get nominated, right, yeah, yeah, you get nominated Game of the Year, your games will get a spike in sales because everyone is talking about your game again. Mm-hmm. Um, Cyberpunk, you get a great anime 
the to accompany your game in a in a popular streaming service like with edge runners people are going to start buying your game again mm -hmm. the same happened with uh the witcher 3 uh the same happened with arcane and, and actually i don't even think riot games is league of legends was even down but like regardless like it, it kind of like you get a, you get a boost that way yep but typically when you, most games don't get those kind of opportunities in other forms of media and you don't recover after your first 90 days so i mean does it really without seeing the the percentage does it really matter yeah. i don't know and, and that's the just thing like without the actual seeing the actual number does it really freaking matter and if that number is like three percent then it's like what are we talking about here but if that number is like 300 percent, it's like yo yeah, but what is that? I, but still, I would that, never put my game in game pass. So it's what like, that, what is that number based off? Is that three hundred percent based off of the tail end of the last four months of sales after the game is like old or, and or is it and nobody's is it a, playing it? Or is it like an average or or a projection of what you expected to make at that point? Right, or, or what you expected to be selling at that point? Is it? Is it? Uh, are the games that are met that are, are in that percentage? Are there these games that are no longer in Game Pass? Mm -hmm. Is are they still in Game Pass at that twelve month mark, or were they in Game Pass at some point, and then they haven't been in Game Pass in six months? But due to the fact that your game is cheaper now, and you expect a certain amount of sales a year later, but because it had already been in Game Pass, people had already tried your game. And the same people who would have potentially picked your game up for thirty dollars a year after its release didn't do that because they already tried your game in Game Pass and or played it and completed it and mm -hmm. they moved on. And so is that the reason why the sales are diminished? Right. Who the heck knows? I don't know. Um well, they I will a... say though, like that it's not it's not a good look for them to see anything is diminishing in, in 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 subscription services so it is what it is man but the, yeah but the, but the funny thing is even if you go back to the whole like netflix thing does do people still go out and buy blu-rays once a movie or a show hits a streaming service or anything like i know a lot of people i guess it would depend on how much they like the movie well, that same thing it is with the game, though. You know, you get to that point. But uh, there was a thing around this moment. Especially when that movie leaves Netflix. When it, well, yeah, then, yeah. But at that point, that's the only place you can get it is is buy it. There, There is no streaming it anywhere else. Um, you, you can rent it from Prime Video. Prime Video is... Well, yeah, you can rent movies. Uh, yeah, still rent. But at that point, I always feel like weird when I'm renting a movie. It's like you're going to... I mean, you would it rent it for five. You could buy it for, what, 12? 15 at 15 sometimes 20 if it's a brand new thing yeah. but, but uh, although that's not a very i, I we, we do have to recognize that like netflix isn't like a one-on-one -on -one comparison no and, and 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 both sides of the of the the big owl use netflix positively or negatively whenever they want to support their argument mm -hmm. but like realistically in netflix you can't buy any of the content that's in content, netflix yeah but you can buy everything that's in Game Pass with, with or without a discount. I know that the discount isn't, um, it's not, a, a, well, it's, no, that's not universal for everything. So it's like, oh, it's, it's, it may be like, well, 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 it, it'll be like 15% for maybe like, for like an indie game. And then it might be like 5% for like a big AAA game that was in there day one. It, it's never, it's not the same percentage across the board is what I'm saying. Gosh. Um, but, yeah. We're gonna want to shout out a couple things real quick. Yeah. Shout out to Dragonheart Yobi with gifting five. Oh, five. Man. Five gunslingers? Let's go. Shout out to you, bro. Five, man. Gun gunslinger memberships. Yes, man. That's what's up. Um, when did you change it to gunslinger? What, 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 what is channel. that one? That's the channel one. Oh, okay. I got you. I got you. Yeah, got that's you. the channel one. Um so yeah, if you got a, a a channel membership from Yobi, please give him a, a thank you in the chat. Also, we have a super chat from Stanley Buffington, five dollars super chat. Appreciate you, Stanley. He says, "Not a gotcha moment for Microsoft, but a gotcha moment 
for the Microsoft fans claiming Sony and Nintendo need to put their games on a subscription service. They won, and uh, hey, look, that Super Chat might be a nice little segue to uh, the next topic. Yeah, definitely. Um, the one thing I will say, we're finishing out that last uh, topic is I do think that um, in general, these games, after a certain amount of time, they're going to just lose momentum. Not every game is going to stay up there. I don't think that they were being deceitful or anything when it comes to that. I just think that, you know, it's just like when Microsoft comes and says that they're third place. Yeah, they're third place, but you never want to hear a company say like, oh, we're we're trailing third place. We're, we're this and we're that. But, you know, and this company is hundreds of light years better than we are at this and that. Yeah, you're telling the truth, but don't nobody ever really want to hear that. And your stockholders and stuff really don't want to hear that. You're basically they're just- also talking up like 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 there there's a reason why you're mentioning it and saying it the way you're saying because it. You're trying, trying to yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're a trillion dollar corporation. Like, you, you are, yes, you are in third place. A lot of that is on you, though. Like, it's not like you, <laughs> like, when you mismanage studios, that's the, you know, that Sony didn't, didn't go in and, and, and impersonate your, uh, your, your producers and have them give bad direction to, mm-hmm or choose to ignore uh mismanagement going on in games and and miss deadlines like that didn't happen nintendo didn't go in and then tell like the undead labs uh people to just like not know how to make a triple a game mm-hmm. um like like no that's the, that's all on you so it's like you you have the opportunity to make these changes and and make better games and get these games out in a reasonable time period you just haven't yet and so you're right i mean you're in third place because that's how you performed it's not because you know sony's keeping you down or you oh we we need this to compete like you want it to compete you want call of duty you want Diablo and you want Overwatch and anything else that Blizzard inv- eventually ends up making. You want those things because they know how to get games out in a timely manner. Right. But you got 25 studios? 30 Well, yeah, 25 25 yeah, yeah they're try- it'll be 32 you, if this deal goes through. What what's the you, what's stopping you from doing that yourself? Just you know, like like I, I I I don't subscribe to this. You need Activision to compete, but likewise, like so some of the 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 talk out there, like if they don't get this, what's going to happen to Xbox? Not a damn thing. They're mm-hmm. going to keep doing what they're doing. You know what's going to happen to Xbox? Whatever Microsoft wants to do with it. That's what's gonna happen to Xbox. Ain't go- Xbox isn't going anywhere. No, no, Look, no I know that's you, you what I'm saying. You don't go from the de- deciding to drop down seventy billion dollars on a on a, a gaming acquisition. The shuttering doors. You don't get it. All right, we out of gaming. Screw this. Yeah. That doesn't make any dag on that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. If I'm an investor in Microsoft and you just sold me on we're we're all in on gaming. Like I'm saying, I'm telling you, but we are we are a hundred percent in on gaming. We so much in on gaming, we spend seventy billion dollars on this one on this 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 trifecta of companies. Right. Oh, we didn't get it. You know, screw it. Gaming's done. We didn't really want that anyway. We're we're gonna move on. We're gonna switch more games. We're gonna switch more into cloud and other areas of cloud now. Like what? Why would I trust what you're saying now when just a year ago you was all in on gaming? They can't. Mm-hmm. They can't like like they got people got to think like people literally don't use their brain sometimes. Think for a moment. How would they go from doing that to like we're completely out of the business? Period. Now, Gregor broke up a bullet point. He said, "To be fair, Microsoft bought Nokia, then later shut down their phones. Did they sent spend seventy billion dollars on Nokia? Seven, it was seven point seven billion. So." 10 times less than what they it's tried still, to do. That was still, you got to think about it, Slobo. At the time, that was the biggest acquisition ever made when they made that deal with Nokia. 
at that time. So yes, when you go, when you shoot 20 years in the future and they spend 10 times the amount of that money, it it seems like, oh, that's nothing. But dude, back whenever I forget what year that happened, that was a lot of money, slow mo. And, how, it, and Microsoft how long, just said how long was Microsoft in the phone business when not they that made long. that? Not that long. How long they been in the gaming business? Longer than it was in phones. <laughs> Way two longer. decades. Two probably decades. A, probably a decade longer. Probably a decade and a half longer. I think the phone thing only lasted like three, four years. Yeah, and they're in third place in gaming in console gaming, where they were in in they, phones. They were behind places like Spring Mobile. <laughs> They were so far behind in phones. It was like, why are you even freaking bothering? Oh, man. You know, Cricket, they were below. The, if if Cricket was back then, they would have been behind Cricket. <laughs> oh, man. They're, they're not moving moving on from gaming. This is, this. you know how long we've been, I've been hearing this? Yeah. Every, I've been hearing... I remember when I first got into this gaming community back in 2017. People were saying, same people who are still saying these things now. Well, you know, Microsoft only got five studios. You know, they're not invested in gaming like that. They're going to drop it. This was their argument. Yeah. Did you, did you ever? So now that they got 23 studios. Now they just move the goalposts to a different, a different excuse why they're going to leave gaming. Like these people are going to keep saying this until either Microsoft either starts dominating or they eventually leave gaming like two decades from now. And then they'll be like, see, I told y'all, you know, for, for, for 25 years, I've been saying it was going to leave gaming. They finally left gaming. Like, well, you know, you don't know what you're talking about, but That's all right, true. thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's just like, it, it, it is what it is. Like I, I, I even regret bringing it up because honestly, it's it's silly. They're, they're it not goes down that. a rabbit hole. And the one thing I will say though, um, Microsoft's um, their ideals are really linked to their CEO. I really wonder what the next you know, because Saudi is not going to be there forever. What's that's the, true. What's that's, the next CEO? That would be say? the only. That would probably be the only thing that would actually get them out of gaming. If things don't like, if they're not absolutely making, forget how much revenue they're generating. If they're not being profitable, uh, you know, like like it's really a a strong part of the Microsoft business. Um, and Satya moves on, and there's a new CEO. Yeah, then you're kind of looking at like he might kill it. He might yeah. kill it simply because you know. I don't I don't need this to be successful in order for me to keep my job. Yeah. And I can actually drop this and then drop up, you know, and then have us refocus on other things. Um, and not even necessarily make more money or generate more revenue doing whatever other thing that we dropped this for and still look good with the investors because all that was the was the predecessor's deal. Yeah, so. as long as the stock price is going up, you winning. <laughs> Right, right. Yeah. So, yeah. Moving on with, yeah. Uh, shout, yeah. Shout out to, uh, shout out to everybody. He said, uh, Rodham said, Sadia was going to kill it before Phil saved it, and well, look, that's they, and he had to convince Sadia why, him. yeah, why it was worth it. And look, that's what what Game Pass is. If there wasn't Game Pass, there would be no Xbox. I, I, and that's the thing. I think a lot of people don't understand because I do believe that. The fact that Microsoft was able to switch over their whole ecosystem to basically mirror what all of Microsoft is doing, because Microsoft is basically a service company now when it comes to like all their offerings. And the fact that he was able to spin that with Sadia was a way of them saying, OK, let's 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 get this to work. And then, and then now Sadia's bought it, bought into it. That it yeah. who knows if that's going to be the situation, you know, long term. You know, it, it's it's only a matter of time until we find out, and we don't know. It did, it could be a completely different thing when Phil Spencer leaves because we don't even know who's gonna what's gonna happen when that happens. So it's 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 just crazy to think about. But I, as of right now, Microsoft, it's no reason for them to even think about 
anything like this, they're going to just move forward like they've been moving forward. And people, it's going to be a long time until we see anything of the negative happen when it comes to like Xbox and their position in gaming and stuff. But it's going to be cool. Yeah, uh, let's let's move on to yeah, this. I, I really want to talk about this PS Plus stuff, yeah, man. Yeah, let's like, talk about it. So, this was a, go ahead. I mean, strong, strong move by Sony. Very strong move. Like I, man, I was like, man, I like that. I, I was <laughs> like, too. It's that boring month, as heck, if but I, I like if, it. If I didn't, what? It was a boring game, but I like it. <laughs> No, I'm not talking about Horizon. Yeah, Horizon Forbidden West is boring. I'm talking about the the PS Plus offering. That's what I'm saying. The offering is great. It's just that the the go ahead. No, like, what what are you saying? <laughs> go like, ahead. We're no, talking I about agree. a game. No, I know what you're talking. about. And you about. were talking about a game, and I'm like, no, I'm, I'm talking, talking about, about everything. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the headlining game that's inside of, that they're talking about, but you know, but everything else is. Well, incredible. We, we should we, let's yeah go ahead just, just go let's, ahead let's, let's approach this in sections okay yeah, we'll so because there's a lot of different moving parts to this so go ahead approach it from so, the way you go so they they updated the ps plus game catalog lineup they did um i don't know when this starts though is it oh sorry it does start the 21st, 21st. so that's tuesday of next week um you're getting horizon forbidden west which so this is like Everyone's kind of talking about how this we get this we can shelve this for a little bit later because I want to get to the games, but like Horizon Forbidden West is coming in a year after um it came out, and then people are kind of wondering if that's gonna be the norm for PlayStation first party games. We can discuss that later. That could be it, the second, the second uh mini topic here. Uh another game that's going in is the quarry, which triple A game came out last summer probably one of the worst super massive games but it's still it's a game in there if you haven't played it you can just and you got the, the, the service go ahead and try it out and probably bang your head against the wall with how dumb the characters are but um resident evil 7 outriders which is a very good looter shooter um scarlet nexus which is an awesome action rpg like if you have not played scarlet nexus yet you, this you should be jumping on that Borderlands 3, you know, Borderlands is Borderlands, you know, great looter shooter there too. Story sucks compared to, two. it just sucks, period. <laughs> Story sucks, period, but is what it is. Tekken 7, I'm not into fighters, but you know, if you like fighters, you got that. Ace Combat 7, Earth Defense Force 5, uh, Oninaki, Lost Spear, mm -hmm. I Am, Setsuna, The Forgotten City. Now, let me talk, The Forgotten City is I think it was one when it came out, I think it came out 2021. It was like one of my honorable mention sleeper, like in my like most liked games of 2021. It was it wasn't top five, but it was definitely I think it might have been in my top five actually. I don't know. But it's like one of the best time loop games ever. Like pe it, it, this came out the same year as 12 was it 12 minutes? I think it was the same year. Twelve minutes sucks. <laughs> I remember when you <laughs> played the game. You was like, "This is disappointing." <laughs> Yo, it's bad. It's really bad. Twelve minutes is 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 sucks. And then the ending makes you want to go like, "All right, man, I need I need to go find who wrote this and punch them square in the throat, like throat punch, right?" But the Forgotten City is a time loop game done well. Like if you haven't played that. Forget the visuals ain't that great, but the story's awesome. Mm -hmm. And if you just ignore that the visuals aren't like some AAA, like you know, super uh impressive, ultra realistic visuals, you're gonna really enjoy a gem there. But like that's that's some a really strong offering for for the collection. And then the, for classics, they got uh Legend of Dragoon from PS1, Wild Arms 2, Harvest Moon. And excuse me, destroy all humans. Mm -hmm. So, I I think they, I think the only thing, only critique I would give Sony with this is that so last week they announced all the games that were like that they were shutting down the the PlayStation Plus collection. Remember that? Yeah, they shut it down and they said, but they did give you the option. They said as long as you download the games or or download them before they're gone. You'll yeah. own them forever, but you have Wait, to do is, it before they're gone. 
which my, my my whole stance on that was if you haven't played these games yet, and these games are like some of them are like five years old. They were old, some old games. If you haven't played these games yet. You never were going to play them, right? And I think people are more whining about not having access to something that they had that they. But I'm just like, just download the game. You're fine, right? Yeah, just but I game think and, and, and put it in your cart. And but, but I think for like PR for PR sake. They should have announced that and then announced this mm-hmm. at That's the same true. time. So, because then it's like nobody would have cared that like these old games that they still ain't played or they already beat or whatever are no longer going to be available in the service that they are paying for. But they still have yet to play these games because then all of this stuff is is being added in, you know, added into the service. And then you kind of look at it like, oh, well, look, there's a trade off. Like, I mean, still. Games leave out of Game Pass all the time, mm-hmm. and then when games leave, new games come in. It is what it is, right? So it's just like it, it, I thought that would have probably my, my only critique is they they could have just made that announcement with this announcement, and nobody would would have even complained. Uh, otherwise, this this looks this is really good, and there's some games here that I might just install and just play on. Like I might just play Scarlet Nexus for a third time. You just install it on PlayStation and play through it again, just because yeah. it's available. You know, it's it's the game. The game's that that much fun. Most of the stuff on here for me is either I I either don't want it or already beat it. But if you are a casual gamer and you have this service, like you got some quality titles here that you can you can go through. Mm-hmm. What, what are your thoughts on it, man? Yeah, no, I I think um, you're right on point with that. I also agree with um, Gregor in the chat. Um, you talk about, you said, you know, when it comes to Horizon, we know that that was something that was probably put in there due to the fact that, you know, we got the VR uh, game coming out and we also got True. DLC coming out very right, soon for right. that game. So um, that is definitely another part of why they said we get this, get the first one into people's hands so they can um, get caught up or just get immersed into what the world is. And then we're right. going to hit them with the VR and then we're going to hit them with the uh, DLC. But when it comes to everything else, uh, I just went in like I, uh, that's the thing. You're absolutely right. Cause I had access to that collection since day one of having a PS five, because remember that was even before, um, they did the play, you know, because PlayStation Plus um, Premium wasn't a thing then. And as long as you had a PlayStation 5, you didn't even have that, that PlayStation Plus. You just got access to that collection no matter what. So mm-hmm. all the games that are in there are the ones that are pretty much going away. And I just went in, like, a lot of those games I already owned, but I just went in the ones I didn't own. I went in and, like, say, yep, click this, click that, make sure this is in my library. So even even if I let my subscription lapse, I got it. Uh, I just think this was a really, really strong move for them because the thing that people always say is, you know, Game Pass got better games and all this other stuff. And, and people will say that a lot of these games were already in Game Pass before, but the thing is, who cares? The, they're in there now just like when game pass first started a lot of the games that were in game pass were games that people already played when they first started mm-hmm. it was just the fact that it was like oh my god this amazing service that has all these games and nobody's going to take that away and say that that wasn't an amazing thing that they did um the biggest promise with microsoft was their first party games going in there which we're still waiting for you know the we're still eating a la carte off of that one because, you know, a lot of the stuff is still, you know, we're still waiting for it, but it's really good to see that they actually have a lot of these games going in there. Um, like Scarlet Nexus is the game that I actually bought. And I was like, man, it hit game pass like a month after it came out. And I was like, I paid for this game, but guess what? I was happy. I did because I got a chance to experience it, uh, on day one. And it had some of the best like combat, of that year it was it, I mean, it probably, it's awesome. probably still some of the best combat no matter what of any game that you play so yeah. um it was really really cool and i like the direction one, that one, they're going with this go ahead super anime story i mean like oh, yeah, that very story anime. is is convoluted and what the heck is going on half the time but you get to play it from two two different perspectives from K- kasani and and you i think that was think the, the guy's name yeah 
Yeah, I I did both, you know, and you got to see the the like the things that you that were confusing of why characters were doing certain things. Um, you saw it from from one character's perspective. You go to the other, and you're just like, oh, so that's what was going on. So it's almost kind of like to get the full complete story. You really had to play both sides, which. Uh, frankly, I didn't mind at all because they had New Game Plus, and I was able to kind of carry over, carry over um, your main, yeah. carry over levels and stuff. So it was, it was, it was fun, man. It was, uh, and it, I didn't mind paying for the game because I got to play it at launch, yeah. and I didn't have to wait, you know. And so, like a lot of people would be like, "Oh, man!" Like I, I think a lot of the people that complained about games going into in sub services after they bought it are people who bought the game and didn't play it. You bought the game and it's set in your backlog, and then it showed up in Game Pass it's still or in PS your backlog, Plus, even after it and it's game still in your backlog. Now you're mad because you're like, "Oh, I could have just installed it," but it like you didn't play it yet game been out for six months you still ain't play it did you what did you really like so what you you spent money on it and you supported the developers that's great but you really weren't that interested in the game because you still didn't play it so so what mm. it's in game pass you see you 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 were out 60 bucks I mean, <laughs> I mean, like at least it wasn't 70 <laughs> bucks slow well i mean do you get mad when it goes on sale you know, no. five months late after launch, you know, oh, it's on sale for thirty dollars now. Dang, I could have just bought it now. Could but maybe, yeah, yeah, you know, play your games instead of complaining. I don't know. I don't know. You're right. Uh Gregor says he thinks that he swore that they said that it was only temporary with the PlayStation Plus collection just to get people into the ecosystem, um, because they didn't have to buy any games for their PS5. That might have been the case. I don't remember. I just know that I don't recall them ever saying it was temporary. I just but then at the same time, I don't the, yeah. Yeah, I just remember them saying that your every PlayStation 5 purchase comes with a library of games. And it, 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 it they, I do remember them saying that you don't basically have to buy games because you can just play the ones that they give you in that collection. <laughs> Look, you install the games but before May, you still have access you to still them. Still have access to it. You can so, delete so it off the, your hard drive and everything. There's you know, literally there. nothing else to complain about at that point. And remember, you, got, you could you could install all those games right now, and as long as you still have your subscription, you still have those games, and it, which is no different than if the collection continued on. It's not like they were adding games in there after the fact. It's the, it's the same bunch of games they put in there from the very start. So it was just, well, what? It's so, like, it's... Go so, ahead. so Player Player says, you know, if Sony is successful with Plus, then Microsoft made the wrong business decision with Day One Drops. I disagree. Yeah, I disagree. The only reason I disagree, because I will say that there is an inherent thing when it comes to they probably should have thought about the whole thing about say having having the games launch on the same day that you could have probably just you know you could have you could have double dipped and i think that would have definitely been something but i also think that microsoft was in a situation where they just didn't have any confidence in not only their teams but their people didn't have confidence in them releasing games so they had to find a way to do something so i honestly believe didn't. that game pass people still don't them. have confidence they in still them don't because they haven't yet. even looked there's a segment that. people who still don't have a confidence and then and yeah. I, I i i am so i am <laughs> somewhat in that camp yeah like i'm just like yo you just, you did release halo infinite like <laughs> less than two years ago like you, you let it go out early. Like here, here's the weird thing: State of the K two needed like six months before it released. They they let that out early, they and then early. and stay, uh Sea of Thieves released with no content. They let that out early. They said after the fact, yeah, we 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 needed games, so we let we launched them before they were really ready to go. They said it like they understood that was wrong. Mm -hmm. then fast forward to 2021 and here you are releasing halo infinite too early because you needed content and that game needed to get out it's like i don't i, I don't know if they really learned their lesson like that you know like i i think and i'll keep I'll, I'll continue to keep saying this the studios that they acquired that are veteran studios and and know more about gaming and how to release games than they than xbox leadership probably ever will like double fine and obsidian 
and and you know they're fine they'll they'll be just fine they're they're gonna do their thing it's the it's the other guys that they acquired that need help right that are are you know not gonna really get get that help from leadership they're gonna have to figure it out on their own with a big uh bank to to rely on which is pretty much all Microsoft has really given them right. all that's it like i'm what I mean is that to, to to go back to what player player said, the value of how the gaming community sees the PlayStation games was different than the value of how people saw the Xbox games. When they saw X, Xbox games, they all they saw was Halo, Gears, and Forza. And if you weren't in the Halo camp like that, you didn't care. If you were in the Gears camp like that, you didn't care. You weren't in the Forza camp like that, you didn't care. Because those those are established, like, not new IP kind of franchises. When it comes to new content, is where people will be like, yeah, I'll rock with a new IP that's coming from Nintendo, though being published by Nintendo. I'll rock with a new IP that's being published by Sony. They don't know about Microsoft. And so, like... I, I say all that knowing that like High Fire Rush just came out and High Fire Rush is a quality game. That's a quality Great. game. Really good game. But it's just it comes to consistency. And you know, if if, if they if they really had confidence in High Fire Rush, I don't think it would have been a shadow drop. Mm -hmm. I think it would have been a game they would have been marketing like for like the past six months before it came out. I, I, I don't think they really knew what they had with it, which kind of goes to, do you know what you're doing here? Because mm -hmm. look, look, I don't credit Apex Legends' success to EA. EA Shadow dropped that too. I don't think they knew Apex Legends was going to be good or that like... I mean, they paid a lot of money. Four years from now, it's going to be... It's going to have 600k yeah. concurrent players on one platform alone. Yeah. I don't think they knew that was going to happen, but they got lucky. I think they knew that they were going to be successful on the outset because they did put a lot of money and marketing in the right places when it came to... We don't have to go do a marketing campaign. We just get some of the biggest streamers out here have them, you know, ready to play the game on the day that we really to announce it. And I think that really did help with them because like literally every streamer was playing that game. Like the who's who's was playing it. So I think they already had success in the bottle when it came to just the way they announced it. But yeah, the long term tail, like you're talking about right now, they they never saw this. Okay. Well well let me let me let me I don't mind being wrong. Uh, uh, gaming addict in the chat said he talked to the dev and they did they did do the shadow drop on purpose. They so it's well, I mean, look, it's not like I'm not saying they was just like, man, you know, let's just drop it down, like like it was a spur of the moment thing. But I, if they if they felt like the shadow drop was the best method for a game they actually had confidence in, that's fine. I I just kind of feel like just. You would have got more eyes on the game and more sales in the game if you actually marketed it instead of shadow dropping it. And anytime someone isn't willing to do that, like I don't see the purpose of a shadow drop unless you're unsure. But if they were sure that it was definitely going to turn out the way it did, that's fine. That's cool. I, I I'll I'll accept that. I just I don't know if that's the the norm. But right. that's cool. Um, I just kind of feel like overall, like what you really want from Xbox management and and, and as a publisher is consistency. Um, and and maybe we'll get that this year. Maybe there's like there's hot half our rush first. That's a great first start, right? Then Redfall comes through. If Redfall is popping, hey, that's even better. Mm -hmm. Starfield hits. Let's go. You know, it, it's actually everything that Bethesda fans really want even better than then you got you know forza motorsport later this year which we all know was just going to be quality because it's, it's turn 10 then that's that's what you want that's the kind of consistency that you want um but it's 
you know, that's why they had to put their games in day and day. And it's different than Sony. Sony doesn't need to do day and day with their games. Their games are gonna, for the most part, their quality they're gonna sell. You right. know, they they they're gonna they're gonna sell well, and then they can do put it into the service a year later, uh, if they choose to, and it's just gonna bolster their service for those who didn't pick up the game. Hmm. I agree with that. Um, he said that they are. I guess he's it. They're, they're doing. They're dropping an interview with Tango uh, GameWorks, and they're gonna. They talk about the marketing. They're gonna drop that um interview soon on the IOP. So make sure you go to the IOP channel and check that out. Oh, shout out to the the uh, Mrs. Cuts, Mrs. Eric Cuts for the win. Uh, we got to get you. Uh, Up there, okay. we got to get you back on the show. Definitely would have been a good week because I know you've been playing a lot of Hogwarts. So. I didn't even think about it, but um, definitely it's it's uh, glad you're enjoying the game like everybody else is. Um, someone made a asked a question, slow mo, and um, I definitely want to bring it to ask you this before we move over to the last topic. Okay, you play a lot of multiplayer games. You play predominantly mm-hmm. on PC. Yeah, so, but you're also in player pools with console people. Now. Mm-hmm. One of my friends, shout out to uh, Ducky in the chat. He's in my Destiny clan. And we play um, a lot of PvP. Mm -hmm. And there is this running gag that they have. Every time we play PvP, if we losing, it's always because there's PlayStation people on the other team. And I'm like, y'all what? let this get into y'all heads so bad. Wait, 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 time, 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 time. They're saying that huh? they, they're, they're blaming that they said they're laggy. The game, like they're morphing through walls and everything. And I'm like, bro, are we really doing this? I was like, y'all are blaming PlayStation wait, wait, wait. gamers time. for this. Hold on, no. what do you... So, they're uh, laggy because they're cool. They're playing on PlayStation play Four or something. Listen, listen, listen. When I, I, I can't even make this up, bro. I, I'll be playing with them, and then all of a sudden, say we're playing, we're playing trials, we're playing trials on side, we're playing PvP. Uh-huh. If if we start losing, if something funny starts happening, they'll go look at the chat. <laughs> I mean, not the chat. They'll go look at the the player list. And the you icons, know, it shows the, the icons and yeah. their PlayStation icons on the other team. And they're saying, the first thing they'll say is, man, I can't stand PlayStation gamers. Why, why can't I play in my old player pool? Why I got to play with these laggy PlayStation gamers? Oh Slowbo, I want to know, is there any, do they have, do they have a, do, is there anything to this? No. In your opinion? It, it, there, there's like a, I'm, I'm going to give you some examples on why this is, I consistently hear things like this. It doesn't matter which platform you're on. I will be playing. It doesn't matter if it's Rogue Company, Halo Infinite, Call of Duty, whatever, right? And I will hear people who getting bodied complain about certain things. PC players hate, 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 hate playing console players now. They hate it. I know they do. Which is... A console player is probably like, what? They hate playing against? Yeah, they hate playing against you because they hate your controller and they hate that you get aim assist. Mm -hmm. And they hate it so much, every time there's a game that has cross-play in it, they whine to the the developers. The developers can't even tweet, hey, we got some patch notes. Hey, here's some marketing for our game. Hey, man, turn off that aim assist and those controllers. Hey, man, get rid of cross-play, man. It's ruining the game. This is literally what they say every single time. And watch a streamer who's a PC player using mouse and keyboard die to somebody with a controller and see their response, man. That was that wasn't even a real shot. He didn't even aim at me. It was a, how, how do you know if he was aiming or not? You you didn't watch him shoot. You don't, you don't know. But literally, this is what people do every single time they start losing the console, guys. Man, I got man, he got wall hacks. Shout out to you, Enrique. This is what Enrique does every single time in Halo, and he starts losing. Enrique is like that, that guy. He, he's using the wall hacks. <laughs> he does. He's got he an aim bot. He's got an aim bot. Man, he's he definitely he's that's definitely Max. an aim bot. He's used the like just <laughs> people can't help themselves. Some people they gotta. It's gotta be a reason why I'm getting body. It's not that 
I'm just not that good in this match or that the other person just got me in this match. It's not that the other person is has, is any remotely skilled enough to kill me. It's got to be the lag switching. They got wall hacks. They got aimbot. They cheating. And, and look, I'm not saying there isn't cheating. There is cheating. But it ain't as prevalent as some people make it make it seem. And and people who on mouse and keyboard who try to act like oh my god like that that the, the aim assist is ridiculous i've seen people try to test out aim assist like i'm gonna show you how how easy aim assist is on console and then they'll like like have a a ridiculous test to show you how aim assist is is, is over p on console that doesn't make any sense whatsoever if if controller is so op mouse and keyboard guy why don't you use it that's what I said. If it's so good, and it's so it's so op, it's so it's, it's, it's easy mode. Then why don't you use it, stupid? You don't use it <laughs> because it's because you lying and you capping just because you getting body. That's why. <laughs> because anyone is going to use. But like, if if you didn't care about advantages, why why would you tune your settings and and your sensitivity and your and your mouse certain things certain way? Why, why don't you just play default? Oh, right. Because you want to win. You so if win. controller really was all that much of an advantage, why didn't you just use a controller? That's true. <laughs> if if <laughs> it's it's funny because it's like it, everyone always has an excuse. So to go back to your point, it, laggy PlayStation player, like what? Oh, like that man. doesn't that, that doesn't funny. make any sense. They it's, they they every time it it it's, it doesn't make it any sense whatsoever. Mm. What makes the PlayStation players more laggy than Xbox players? I was telling them th that's what I was saying in the chat. I was saying you're you both do on consoles. I was literally telling. I was saying you do realize that they're saying the same thing about you. <laughs> right. Like exactly. <laughs> like think about it. <laughs> they literally say the same thing about us. It's like okay, they probably said goddamn Xbox players laggy as heck. <laughs> And, and I'm just, I'm just like, like everybody has their, this is, they got an advantage against us. And, and, and I think it's almost like a mindset is like, yeah, I overcame that. I'm yep. look at my KD. I agree. Look, 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 look at my skills on the skill board. Yeah. Look, look, look at my, my score. I did that against PC guys with mouse and keyboard. And they was cheating. I did that <laughs> against some cheating. console guys on aim assist. They got the aim assist was cheating. Yeah. Yeah, I did that against the PlayStation lackey PlayStation guys. They was shit. It's 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 a mindset that people have to have in order to make themselves feel better. And then when they losing, they'll rely on them cheating bastards in X Y Z. I see it everywhere. I would love to get like the the PC guys in the room. The, the the PC guys that hate Amosis in a room with the console guys that hate PC cheaters and right. just see see who comes out alive. It'll be great. Yeah, I I, <laughs> I see he brought that up. He said I thought you would get a laugh out of that because it it's literally consistent. Like we just be playing and sooner like as soon as a PlayStation a group of PlayStation players show up and the game gets harder and I, it, all of a sudden like I died around the wall. <laughs> They start looking for reasons. It's funny, man. I, I, I shout out to all my gamers, man. Gamers don't like to just accept that sometimes you just get beat, and that's just what it is. But um, that's all. I just wanted to get your, especially you, because you play a lot of shooters and stuff. So you, you definitely yeah. understand. So yeah, I'm, I'm so familiar with it. It's like when you start, as soon as you start, before you even finish, like I didn't know the whole the play. It was gonna go the blaming the PlayStation players. I thought that was weird. But uh, I, I knew it was going to be some demographic is what's wrong with this game. And it's the only reason why I'm losing right now. I'm losing right now. Yeah. Can't be that the person just like, I mean, they don't have to be better than you overall, but they were just better than you in that match. It can't be, you know, all that. Like, like that's all bullshit. All the main bots in the chat. All the, they're all aim bots. Is that mm -hmm. like, like it's, it, it's, it's a mentality that... Uh, a large number of people who love multiplayer games, um, um, they fall into, and and I and I will always say like, yeah, if you really think it's cheating like that, why, why, 
Why you still play the game? <laughs> <laughs> if you really think controller is 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 that strong and aim assist is that strong, why don't you use it? <laughs> if you really think they ain't do they ain't nothing but cheaters on PC. I mean, like, build yourself a PC, my man. Like, what does he what she doing? Like, I just don't I just don't get it. I it it it, it ain't me because you ain't gonna catch me complaining about like, you know. Yeah, I agree. If, if I if I if I had a negative KD in the match, man, I got body. I got body. Oh, that happened. Yep, got body. Cool. Well, at least we're on the same page. Uh shout out to the chat. Shout out to the 60 people here, man. Really appreciate you guys. Um um it's uh great to have everybody here uh moving on to that final and last topic hogwarts oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, go ahead go ahead go ahead erodimus gives us his made-up statistic of how many people are using the chronos max on console point <laughs> zero one percent forte you want to um, um regale us with that story you had of the guy that came into your store with a chronos max and didn't set up the macros or whatever whatever you gotta do to get it working he and he, he thought it was just gonna be aimbot straight out the box and he was upset because it didn't work yeah because it didn't work he was like it's something wrong with it it's not it's not I, my macros aren't working i was like yeah. did you and, <laughs> and how how uh how how, how much of those chronos and maxes do you keep in the store uh i had i i usually f between five and ten I mean, what i mean is do, do they sell often oh no i i only have one left in my store right now and i usually have at least <laughs> 10 all the time <laughs> and i only got one left matter of <laughs> fact no i i don't even have the one because i shipped it out in a, a, a online order two days ago so i don't even have that so i probably have zero at the store right now yeah it, 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 I ain't gonna call no names out. I've seen a couple of streamers that I know are using using Cronus Max. Like they, I've know they they they're playing Call of Duty on on console, um, and they're they're also playing Rogue Company. And I've and 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 I've always I, like the Telltale sign. I know that they're using it. Is that they're getting by, mm -hmm. and then they'll look at the controller. And was like, oh, I I had a controller issue. Hold on. They somehow didn't connect the Chronos Max or whatever to the, to their control. Oh, they, oh, all of a sudden now now they're every shot's a laser headshot right after that. I'm like, okay, I got you, buddy. You know, it makes makes it makes a ton of sense. So you know, mm -hmm. look, look uh, um, Aramis says <laughs> Aramis doesn't even did. play multiplayer yeah. games. He's like, never heard of that mm -hmm. thing. Look, you never heard of a lot of things. Uh, uh, you don't play multiplayer. You know games. how I know someone's using one, especially when I'm playing Destiny, because they'll do like the little bunny hop, like they'll do the crouch, like uncrouch, crouch, crouch, uncrouch. They'll do it consistently uh, whenever they're being shot at. That's because the Chronos Max does it automatically for you when it's when you take fire. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> the dude just bunny. <laughs> I was like, why are you bunny hopping? And then I was like, oh, because you got a Chronos Max. Now, granted, it makes your it throws your aim off because you're changing your you know your position in 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 height and head height, but it still makes you hard as heck to hit because you're like bouncing around like a bunny. <laughs> And I'm like, man, this is so it's it's just it's so many people. And then people just call the store like you got a chronos, you got a chronos in. I'm like, and I'm like, I can't lie. <laughs> they they call they they call in like they they this illegal. Hey, hey man, you, they, they call like this you, you is got, like something. You got you got that chronos, you got that chronos, man. You got you got it right now. I'll come through right now. I got I can I can I can take two. I can take two. You got you got two. Like what, 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 why why are you whispering? It's, it's, it's a legal device. Look, if if it wasn't, you know, I shout out to the, the I can't I can't remember the name of this Destiny YouTuber, right? Mm -hmm. This this Destiny YouTuber did a video exposing all these 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 console Chronos. Yes, right. Yeah, I and, then, and, then, and then he exposed that the, the liars to be like, it ain't, it ain't that many people doing yep. it. And he exposed them too because yep. he's like, he was like, this is how you know. It's selling like crazy. The Cronus company is it, it is is posting how many they sell. They do, and it's in the hundreds of thousands. They can't make enough of them. I know. I watched they, that they, video. They, as soon as they ship them, 
they're, they're sold out they're sold and they got to make more. So don't miss me with the, it ain't that, ain't, ain't that many people doing it because the only reason why y'all not getting exposed left and right is that PC players are using hacks that are installed in their PCs that anti cheats are able to detect their, their usage right. and then they get banned. You cannot detect Cronus and Max. I remembered this when I was playing the division. And people was the first time I ever heard of Cronus before. People were using it in the in the division to speed up the fire rate of their guns. This is like guns that like you know do higher damage numbers per bullet have a slower fire rate. You know, yeah. like to try to balance things out. They shooting guns, freaking guns that's that, that's doing double the damage of like a SMG with the same fire rate as a SMG, like. What? That's not like, and so it was so bad. It was so bad on the Division Xbox and the Division PlayStation. The Master of Entertainment came out. The community manager was like, "Look, we we understand this is going on, and the Dark Zone is a mess. We need you guys to report these people so we can ban them because that's the only way that we can we can get rid of them because we cannot detect they're in use because it's nothing." actually being done on the actual controller though we can go back in the logs and see that this particular gun shot at like a fire rate that's 10 times its normal fire rate and say that's not normal they're definitely using something that it that is helping them do that get you know and ban them then but they can't detect it the way they can detect it on pc um and so like all this stuff is like this stuff's been going on for a while that company even the company like they know what people buy their product for. They market it that way. Look, look at their website. Look, look at the stuff they said. Like, uh, uh, was it the Astacroft? Like, he, 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 he broke it down. They market it because they know people want to cheat. I'm done. Let's move on, <laughs> yo. I'm with you, bro. Um, all right, let's move over to that final topic. Let's talk about some Hogwarts Legacy and how it's crushing the sales over in the UK. First of all, I love how the UK, the European markets and stuff, are always the ones that are like the super inflated number because it's like this one territory inside of a territory that's doing so freaking well that the game is selling like hotcakes. But, you know, this game is selling well no matter where you're actually at. It was sold out pretty much throughout the whole entire weekend. So, uh, Slobo, you sent me this article. Um, what did they have to say about uh, Hogwarts Legacy basically outselling Elden Ring in the launch window? Um, I think, uh, I think W games, WB is very, very happy with the sales of this game and, and they should be, it's, uh, it, it's, uh, I think it's a, it's a very big come up for avalanche, um, studios, which is the studio that did the game, uh, with, with port key games. It's a big come up for them. And, and for WB, a huge W considering that there are other games that they've released. So for like, like Gotham Knights did not. I mean, critically didn't do well sales wise. I'm not, I think it did decent sales wise because it's, it's a DC property. Mm -hmm. But um, they've had long droughts without releasing games, um, and it's good to see them get a W. You know, a yeah. W critically as well as as uh, as commercially. Um, it's, I would say. Um, and what I was was trying to hold back, um, what I was trying to hold back on when discussing the game earlier was it looks like them boycotts didn't work. No, <laughs> As the usual. Boycotts, they, were, they actually helped. They never work. They 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 probably helped. They probably helped let people more know more people know about the game, and then mm -hmm. they would see gameplay and be like, oh, that that looks pretty cool. And then they would see more, but like, oh, I want to check that out. Or people who uh, are, are gamers, but they don't really care for Harry Potter or the world, the the IP, but they hate cancel culture and they bought the game out of spite. Or, you know, like just all, they really messed up their own cause. Uh, and, and then kind of exposed themselves for being kind of fraudulent considering that like if you really want to go after companies and studios and games that are directly supporting 
uh, organizations that are doing things to hurt the trans community, you you chose the wrong game for that because there are studios that are like like a large percentage of the comp these the publishers and developers are owned by countries like Saudi Arabia that have laws that that make it legal for them to execute people for 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 being trans so like wh where you guys at with that because i don't see none of y'all complain about that but y'all keep complaining about jk rowling who had nothing to do with the development of this game <laughs> like nothing she didn't write anything in it she does benefit from it you know monetarily you just but signed a going... letter saying you can use my ip <laughs> basically that's, that's all she did, she did. <laughs> She's getting paid whether you with the game's boycott or not. So you just really just wasted your time and made yourselves look stupid and hurt your own cause. All that said, uh, I think long term, I think the game's probably going to remain in the top ten. Like the fact that in the U in in Europe, no other game has sold this well since Red Dead Two says a lot. Like we don't have concrete numbers yet, but that says a lot about how well it's selling. I think it'll be a top ten. Like when it's all said and done, and we're looking at the end of this year, and we're looking at what the 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 sales numbers, the top ten games sold of the year, it's going to be up there in that top ten. But <laughs> we ain't going to see a single nomination for this at the video game. Oh, Awards. absolutely! You, not. you guarantee that. That's not happening. There ain't gonna be a not even best sound, not be, <laughs> best sound design. Nope. Uh, game of the year. Forget game of the year nominee. It's not happening. B best action. No. Best nothing. Okay. They're gonna act like the game don't exist. Pretty much. <laughs> so, um, Hogwarts, man. I knew this game was gonna be pretty big i didn't expect it no i did expect it i did expect it to sell well but man the controversy really i do think helped this game a lot because people wouldn't let this go and all they did was every time they brought up jk Rowling, they talked about hogwarts legacy hogwarts legacy yeah. and then you just drove people to like because then you had the curiosity that kicks in people was like right. well let me see because they don't even know that this game that's the thing People don't even do a good enough job to even say that she has nothing to do with the game other than signing her name or signing the rights over for them to use it. You know, for the majority of the boycotters don't know what she said. They don't even know what she, she said. They don't even know what she said. They don't know if the devs have already been paid or not. I see that all the time. Mm -hmm. the, 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 so dismissive. The devs have been paid. So what? It's like, no, the devs have not been paid. It's not, not in the method that you think it is. The developers for Avalanche and Porky Porky Games, they uh they, they have kind of the kind of contracts that you would see from like Gearbox, which I, I kinda of think it's not necessarily a good uh a a, a good fine uh compensation mm -hmm. uh package so to speak. Uh because it, it becomes a situation where on the back end developers can end up getting the short end of the stick no matter if the game is good or not but essentially they take uh they have a lower salary than mm -hmm. what the average is in the industry in order to get uh a potential massive payout if the game does well through uh royalties and um it, of, of the of the game sales and this game selling great is great for them. They're probably going to get some fact checks real soon and good for them, you know, good, good for them. But when it came to Gearbox, uh, there was some cooking in the books as usual with Randy Pitchford and Absolutely. he told them, yeah, like the game didn't make enough to justify giving y'all y'all bonus, even though the game sold 5 million and five in this first five days of, of Borderlands three days of being on the market. So it's, it's not, uh, not a great um a great uh philosophy or at least i i in my opinion to compensate your developers but that said that is the way they are being compensated and because of that 
people saying, oh, well, you know, as a counter to people saying, well, I want to support the developers that made this game. They got nothing to do with what J.K. Rowling has said or done. And therefore, like, they made a good game. I want to play it. I think they deserve to get this money. The counter to that, they've already been paid. That's false. Because mm-hmm. they, they will get more money, you know, for, for what the work they did if people bought the game, which they have. So, this is what it is. Yeah, definitely. Listen, man. Um, how long do you think it's going to take? Have you been streaming it? I haven't streamed it. I need to start streaming it, though. I, I really yeah, do. I, I, it, I haven't it, seen no you know, lunch it, times or breakfast or lunch or dinner or <laughs> slow mo lately. I haven't been streaming because, like, I'm work has been very. I have a lot of periods where I'm just like, I just pause the game and go take care of something for work. And that could be like 30, 45 minutes. Okay, and it's, it's frequent enough that, like, that would be a very bad stream. It'd be detrimental to the stream, right? Right, because like you know, I'm playing the game for 15 minutes. I got st- excuse me, stop and do something for 30. Come back to play a game for the 30 minutes. Stop for 45 minutes. You know, like that's not that's not a good stream. Um, I it's just I haven't been able to really just nail down a time a good two hours to just you know stream the game and have some fun. Which I, I think I am gonna get get that done soon though i am going to do a, uh, a stream real soon but it's uh I, I posted uh i posted some gameplay nice. and some funny some funny clips like the some of the executions are really good i posted that on on tiktok i posted on my channel um me beating the dark arts battle arena on hard which is uh probably now that i think about it a slightly easier than beating it on hard, like the other ones on hard. But I'm gonna post the other ones that I, I did on hard as well, because the dark arts one gives you access to the unforgivable uh, curses. So they're actually like, I mean, one of them is just a straight up kill. <laughs> kill this ma- literally does not matter what you. It could be a troll with full health. You hit them mm-hmm. with that spell. It's a wrap for him. He's done. And so, like, that compared to, if you look at my my video uploaded, I hit one this one phase, this one um, round where you, the whole round is just you fighting two trolls at the same time. I killed one of them with the un, with the uh, unforgivable curse, with the, the kill curse. I forgot what it's called. Cadaver, whatever. Uh, died immediately. The other one took me about two minutes to kill. Just because it's on hard mode and he got more health, I got I do less damage and it's just like it, it whittling his health down to forever. And by the and when I did kill him, it was because uh that curse went off a cooldown because it's got the longest cooldown on purpose. It should be on, the longest cooldown. It's an instant kill. And then I got it back and I killed him. But like, yeah, I mean that's just yeah. It's uh, it's it's fun. It's fun. I'm having a lot of fun with it. But I, w- I will, I will start streaming it soon. Yeah, you should. All right, man. Well, as always, like I said, it's amazing being here with you, man. I really appreciate all the, all the time you put into this and uh, the dedication and everything. Um, that's why you're my boy, and that's why we, we do this. So, uh, with that, I am going to read down the channel members for uh this week and uh shout out to once again shout out to Dragonheart Yobi with the uh five gifted subs. Um really really appreciate that and um definitely jump into the Discord. That is one of the benefits you get for being a channel member. Uh, you get access to the Discord so you can uh you know hang out with us, chat with us, play games with us if you want to and everything like that. That's where we basically just sit back and communicate with everybody. So you do have access to that while you're a member. Um but for the channel, we got Texas Lean, Low Key Poppy, uh J Dab, True Serum, uh Big Mad Mo, Dragonheart Yobi, Stardust Acero, Texas, I'm a Rich Swag Lord, Ramon Terrell, Hargi Chani, Brap, Basement Radio RK Podcast, Corey Hale, Cat Daddy Lurk, Erotimus, The Homie Slow Mo Backslap, DJ Oris, and That Guy Smitty. You guys power the channel. Really appreciate it. And um, pre- thank you for uh, supporting us in this way. Go ahead, bro. All right. We got John John the Don, Vape Babe, Cat Daddy Lurk, 
Dragon Heart Yobi, Enrique Hagi Shani, Texas, Shu Serum, Aradimus, Ramon Terrell, Homie One Kenobi, Gaming Forte, Corey Hale, Stardust Cicero, and that guy Smitty. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, really appreciate you guys supporting the channel. We uh, we we love the the support that you uh, that we get. We were going to the, so something that me and Forte had, had thought about doing um, to kind of like drive uh, drive. Uh, traffic eyes the traffic to the dps channel because what we want to do eventually is get a dps channel up um up to a point where we can just when we do dps it's not going back and forth on our channels it's just on the dps channel but um uh there was something like i started it and then there was something that we realized in the middle like like right before we got started like this would be really bad to be like because it was going i was going to stream it to the dps channel but then it was just like that's not possible with the way things were set up so um i'm gonna upload this podcast to it tomorrow but next week what we're going to try to do is have it stream to to both my channel and the dps channel at the same time so people you could pick and choose whether you're the kind of person that's like I'm tired of the back and forth. I just want to just know one place where the, the, the podcast is going to be. You're, but you're going to be able to have it in that one place. So don't worry about it. So, Yep. Yeah. Yep. Really appreciate that, bro. And with that being said, uh, sir, let everybody know where they can find you, what you got going on your channel, and uh, what you got in store for us over the course of the next week. Uh, slow mo backslap on everything. That is YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, TikTok, OnlyFans. Everything, slow mo backslap. Oh so. my god, only fan. <laughs> I believe you. I believe you. And you're already <laughs> on my channel, uh, Game Forte, uh, YouTube, Twitter, Xbox Live, PlayStation. And um, enjoy your week. Enjoy your games. Uh, enjoy everything that you're playing. And um, have a good weekend, guys. We'll see you guys later. Peace. Peace.